Hello, I'm Nikia Stor, head of R&D here at Rice Result. And uh, today I would like to go into some details about how to use our passive track boxes. So our passive track boxes have been on the market for almost a year now. Obviously, it wasn't the perfect time to start such a product, but nevertheless, actually with all the permanent installations, semi-permanent installations and everything going on out there, we had um, quite good success with the product. There are several hundreds of them deployed now and many of them running all the time. And from some customer feedback and looking at what people were doing with the boxes, um, we can draw some conclusions of some do's and don'ts and we would like to do some expectation management here of what the box originally was designed for to make sure that you have the best results. So first thing is it is called a track box because it was designed for being put on a track, along a track, maybe something like a trail run on a mountain top where you want to have a low weight product going up there, carrying it in your backpack, things like that. Um, with low density and small track widths. That's what it was originally designed for. Now with all the permanent installations going on right now, um, we are seeing more and more deployments where our customers try to do a timekeeping setup where you put it on a, on a street lamp or a lamp post and then capture a whole road of maybe eight width, meter width, eight meter width. And this does work quite successfully, but there are some things that you need to know about how the passive system and the passive track box work. And the most important rule is that whenever you can use a ground antenna, you should use a ground antenna. So if there's the option and you can choose between a ground antenna and a passive track box, go for the ground antenna. We really love to sell you this product, no question about that, but still the ground antenna is the preferred choice if you can use one. But for obvious reason in semi-permanent installations or on a mountain top, you may not want to use the ground antenna. That's why we came up with the passive track box and there are some very good use cases. But the most important thing is that same as with the side antennas for the passive system, the UHF field does not travel through the human body and the distance between the transponder and the timing system is critical. And this is where confusion starts. So in our data sheet, we state that if you use a track box, let's say this is your track box viewing it from above, we say that within a four meter radius, you can expect 99% detection rate. And then it also states that within a eight meter field, you can um, expect 90% detection rate. Okay. This does not mean that if everyone would be passing out here at 8 meter, that you will have 90%. It means that if you have an average distribution of people coming through between the box and 8 meter, you can expect 90%. I know this is a little bit tricky to understand, but it makes sense if you look at it. Within the first four meter, we are pretty sure that we will have 99%. But if we have within the four meter 99%, we can't have 90% here at the end. Actually, if you would, you know, half this and say, okay, half of people come here, half of the people come here. If half of the people come here and they have 99%, if you would want to have 90% in the whole thing, you would only end up maybe with 81% in the second eight meter, four meters. But actually it's even worse than that. The further you go away from the box, the less the detection likelihood. And this is important to understand that the distance between the box and the transponder is absolutely critical, especially when you're using BIP transponders, where the transponder being close to the body has a hard time anyway. So this is not so much critical for road race cycling or events where you can put the transponder somewhere where it's not close to the body, but if you're using BIPs, this is critical to understand. So if you want to, do yourself a favor, put the, trans the track box as close 
to the participants as possible. Do not have additional distance that you don't really need. Now, the thing is, this is looking from above. The typical situation with the, with the track box would be you put it on a, on a street sign or lamppost. So actually you have some trigonometry you have to obey here. Because if you put the box up here, and let's say this is in two meters height, yeah, something like that. And this would be recommended um, because you don't want to have people standing in front of the box, for example. But then the distance you get between your participant and the box may be even a little bit longer than the distance just measured from here to here. And you have to keep that in mind. This is not so much a, a problem if you put it at two meters height, but if you put it even higher, and that's what some of our customers did for tempering reasons, and that's understandable. If you, if you have a permanent installation and you, you're not there and the box is there for weeks or months, you want to put it up as high as possible so nobody yeah, can take it away or destroy it or whatever. So if you put it up to four, four meters, you can understand that even a transponder which is right below the box already has four meters distance. So this is, this is important yeah, to, to keep the distance between the transponder and the box as low as possible in your application. So looking at this, the next critical thing to understand, I already said that you don't want to have a spectator standing in front of the box. Okay, so let's assume we have somebody standing here. You don't want that person to be standing in front of the box because UHF does not travel through the human body. And this is also important for the setup looking at your participants. So if you have your participant coming through over here, you want to have a direct line of sight between the box and the bib or the transponder, depending on where you want the transponder. But it is absolutely necessary to have a direct line of sight between the transponder and the box. And you should try to have a certain time where you have that direct line of sight. This is one of the reasons why we do not recommend the track box or any side antenna for applications where you have large groups coming through. Because if you have large groups coming through, the, the, the time where you can have a direct line of sight between the antenna and the transponder may be very short or even non-existent. Also, this is the reason why if you want to go for wider tracks, especially eight meters, we sell the system or the, the track boxes as a set of two. It's a kit of two because if you set them up on both sides, there is a higher likelihood when you have groups coming through that you have a direct line of sight of at least one of the boxes um, for a short time. Direct line of sight is important and this is especially important if you look at the orientation of the box and you need to make sure that you set it up in a way that people do not walk uh, past the box with their backs facing the box. Because the field does not go through the human body, it's just not possible. Yeah? So you need to make sure that you look at how will people run, walk, whatever, swim, <laughs> no, not swim, uh, across your road, track, timing point, whatever, and that there is a di direct line of sight at uh, at least a short time um, between the box and the transponder. Now, another question that is coming up often is how do you set up the box looking this way towards a transponder or a participant or perpendicular to the road. I try to draw that. So let's say you have your road and you're putting up your track box. The Intuitive way of doing this is doing it like this. So you, you would want to have it pointing in this direction, okay? So the field may be pointing like this. This is the intuitive way if you expect participants to come through in this direction. Uh, you expect people to come like this and you set it up like that. That's what many of our customers do. And this is not our recommendation. And I want to explain why. Our recommendation is actually to do it like this. So let's draw that in green. To put the box 
like this and have it absolutely perpendicular to the road so that the main field strength is here in the middle. And the reasons are the following. First, as I said, you want to have the minimum distance between the box and the transponder. Now imagine a transponder being over here. The minimum distance is the distance at the highest signal strength, which is in the center line of the antenna pattern. Okay, so let's say the transponder comes through on this line, it's running or biking on the other side of the road, and the maximum signal strength for that transponder is most likely to be somewhere in, well, let's do that in blue, somewhere over here because the maximum signal strength of the red antenna pattern here is on this line. And now if you look at this, the distance between here and here is not the width of your road. Actually, if you calculate it, depending on how tilted the box is, you may end up with almost 1.5 of the distance. Okay. So this is actually giving you a larger distance between the transponder and the box than if that same participant would be captured by this box here, where this would be the field where the box is, uh, the box is detecting the transponder, and this distance is smaller than this distance. Yeah? So just keep in mind, this distance is important. This is the smaller distance compared to this. And there, one thing is important to understand is that for our transponders, the antenna in our transponder. It does not matter whether the field comes from this side or this side. This is a dipole antenna and for a dipole antenna it does not make a difference. Even if it's flat like this, there is no difference for the transponder at all if the field comes from this side or from this side. So you can capture it from the side, same signal strength as coming from the front. But there are two more reasons why we t tell our customers to set it up like this. No, the second reason is that if you want to have a precise timestamp, you can imagine that as we're looking for the time where you have the highest st signal strength, the time of the highest signal strength in this kind of setup will depend whether you are on the right or the left of the road. So somebody who is crossing over here will, if he is detected, have his highest signal strength up here. So basically being detected at this level. And if somebody would cross over here, he would have his highest signal strength at this level. So there is this distance between the two participants, which is just because of being on the wrong side of the road, timekeeping wise. I, I know many of you don't really care so much about the split second timekeeping here, but it's just important to understand that for timekeeping, this doesn't make a difference. The other very simple difference is that in this kind of setup, you anticipate that you know the direction that people are coming from. And I hope that you don't have too many experiences like I had on test events, but I can tell you several test events where I set up something and I was told people would be coming from that side and then the first guy was coming from that side. And it just happens, okay? There is a misunderstanding of the planning of the event. You are somewhere out in the woods and you're setting something up and you, for some reason, you, you mess it up. Especially if you have, you know, just help us setting the boxes up where, um, yeah, you tell them they would be coming from the West and then they, they think West is somewhere else. <laughs> so the, the reason, if you put it up like that, people must come from that direction because otherwise you will have them from their backs. And UHF does not travel through the human body. Yeah? So in this kind of setup, um, no matter if they come this direction or this direction, you have equal chances of detecting them. So these are the reasons why we would always recommend to set up the box perpendicular. There is one downside, and that is actually the participant's arm. Because I said, 
UHF does not travel through the human body. And are the arm is also a part of the human body. And there is a downside coming from the side if people run in a situation where they hold their arm between the box and the transponders. There, it may be beneficial to come from the front. But that's the only reason. And we found in our tests that this is actually for normal runners, not really a problem. Because if you look at the arm movement of a normal runner, there will be times where the arm is not between the box and the transponder. So this was a little excourse about the um, setup of the box. If you want to put it perpendicular or pointing to a, transpo uh, pointing to a transponder, we recommend putting it up perpendicular. So last but not least, one important thing about the passive track box is that it can give you some indication of how well it is operating. There are two things to look for. One is the noise and one is the warning that the box issues. The box has a LED which can blink red and green and if it does, it is a warning. The warning will also be shown in the transponder module. You will normally, you can't miss the warning and you shouldn't ignore the warning. And I will try to explain a little bit of what, what the warning is about and what to do in setup. So typically what happens, especially in permanent or semi-permanent installations is that you have some kind of pole and you put up your track box like this, looking downwards. And then, for example, if you want to run it on solar power, you put a solar panel on top of the box. Let's say like this. It's mounted somewhere like that. So this would be a typical situation. Now, what's happening here is that the, the feel of the antenna actually goes a little bit like this. And now you have this part here of your solar panel, which is directly in front of the antenna. And this is where the box will typically issue a warning. It will warn you that it sees something in front of the antenna, which gives it a high reflection making it very difficult to detect a, de detect a transponder down here. And the issue with the warning is that it's actually the same for all UHF systems, but all the UHF timing systems out there have a hard time detecting it that way. And that's one of the nice things that we built into the trackbox that it can give you that warning. So don't see it as something negative compared to your timing system. See it as something positive because the box is actually telling you that the situation it's running in is not perfect. We have something similar in our decoders where we have a return loss warning. It's not perfectly the same because it's more related to the antenna being connected in the decoder box where the decoder can tell you that the antenna that is connected is not perfect, but it's basically the same principle. So in a situation like this, don't set it up like that. Okay, what we recommend is draw, let's say a circle with maybe a two meters diameter through the box and there shouldn't be anything in this area. Okay, so if that circle goes through the box here, in front of the box and also next to the box uh, um, below or above the box, don't place anything, especially don't place any metal parts. Okay, metal is critical because it creates reflections. So try to avoid having anything close or in front of the track box. And don't ignore warnings. If you get warnings, there is something wrong, you should look at the setup. So one last thing is the question of putting it high above or putting it on the ground and um, as the box has its internal stand obviously we planned it for being used like that so for the ones who don't have a box putting it up like this and there are lots of applications where this makes a lot of sense especially as I said the trail run where you have a remote checkpoint somewhere up on the mountain 
and you don't want to carry a tripod and you don't want to have a lot of equipment. Um, this makes a lot of sense to set it up like that. But there are some caveats. You have to make sure that nothing is in front of the box. Uh, let's see, wrong color. So again, the field goes like this. And you ca can't have anything here, especially, um, again, no, nothing containing water. So for example, grass can be something that is in front of the box. So having plants in front of the box, I'm trying to draw some grass here, <laughs> um, is not a good idea. Um, also setting it up below the street surface, so if the street comes up like this, it's not a good idea, things like that. So you want to make sure that there's nothing in front of the box here. And also you need to make sure to understand that the field is going up like this, so if people coming by really close, I have to sh shut down this box again, sorry. Uh, if people come by really close, the field may not be high enough. So you need to make sure that if you put it out down, down on the ground like this, that there is a minimum distance of, I would say, half a meter um, to where participants come through. So putting it on the ground is typically for low volume, low width applications. Whenever you have higher volume, higher width applications, we recommend putting it up on a tripod or a street sign, street lamp, something like that. The recommendation would be if you can put it up. Also, you will have less risk of somebody standing in front of the box. This can also, you know, if the box is unattended, um, can be uh, quite a high risk if somebody is blocking your signal standing in front of the box if it's on the ground. Yeah, so this is, um, all the do's and don'ts of setting up boxes. And for the ones who don't have boxes so far, um, please don't take this video as a, as a recommendation of not using our boxes. Actually, we're quite successful. Um, there are some discussions on Facebook going on, things we're watching that. But just to give you a number, on a typical weekend at the moment, we have about 250 boxes online. Oh, that was just the last few weekends. Actually, we add, there are boxes added every week at the moment. But from those, we rarely get any reports of people missing transponders. Actually, the opposite is the case. It's pretty interesting how well the system even works in scenarios where it wasn't designed for. So we are quite optimistic that now as events are picking up again, we really have a good solution for, for lots of applications where so far it wasn't feasible to put a timing line and a timing decoder and you know, holding everything there. Um, actually, we're really optimistic that this can, can create new applications that you have not seen so far. Yeah, so I hope you, you like this overview of the do's and don'ts and uh, see you in the next video.